What up dudes? It's Gaz and welcome back to the Warframe video. So we've talked about this video for a while. We finally got it out today. The Advanced Void Cascade Guide is here. And yeah, this is the best way to be farming a ton of arcanes, like you know, hundreds of arcanes in some situations. Getting to level 10,000 as fast as possible, so like maximum level enemies you can see in most missions. And also a decent Steel Essence farm, and it's pretty fun along the way. So we're going over a bunch of stuff I use for this mission type, why you should be doing it. It's just going to be a big guide video. So there will definitely be timestamps if you want to be skipping any specific part. But yeah, let's go right into it. So, but before we do, of course, make sure to sub this channel. Make sure you also hit the like button as well. We do daily Warframe videos on this channel, and I really appreciate all the support, guys. I'll be having videos every day, of course, and there will be a weekly reset video tomorrow for the new weekly reset. And this is something that I do on stream basically every every stream. So if you want to be doing a Void Cascade with me, come stop by the stream. I do have a permanent mod booster, basically. So... Yeah, one of the things we'll talk about later is a mod booster being very good here, and I have a mod booster for like 200 more days right now. So, yeah, let's get right into it. So, what is Void Cascade? What is the situation here? Void Cascade is the fastest scaling endless mission in the game. You can get to level 10,000 in like 50 minutes if you're really fast, uh, but usually about an hour and 10 minutes to get to maximum level enemies. Why do we care about maximum level enemies? Well, besides being able to you know, properly test your weapons out, uh, the amount of enemies that uh, the enemy level does not matter as much. What matters here is the Thrax spawn rate. This guy with the scythe in front of your on the screen right now, that guy can drop arcanes, and those arcanes that he drops can be turned into Vospor for the new Whispers in the Wall uh, arcane disillusion or whatever it's called, where you can turn your old arcanes into new arcanes. You get so many arcanes here, you can get like tons and tons of arcanes because each one is twenty two Vospor. So that's one of the reasons to do it. There's also you know AO lock parts and Hespar parts and stuff like that, but mainly for Arcanes. we got Molt Augmented, Molt Efficiency, tons of Arcanes here that are good. That's why you'd be doing this. And the reason you go to level 10,000 is the amount of those Scythe guys that spawn scales up over time. So once you're at level 10,000, it's maximum Scythe spawn rate. They're called Thrax. So that's why you're at level 10,000 as long as possible, because there's so many Thrax that have spawned, and you just keep clearing them out over and over again. As long as you can kill level 10,000s very quickly, like the level 10s, you're going to be getting a good farm going on here. So I'll be showing you how to do that with all my builds. All right, and this is on the Zeramon. So if you, if you are a newer player, you are not going to have access to this. This is also on Steel Path. On the normal path, this is nowhere near as efficient. And without a mod drop chance booster, which only comes from Baro Katir, Sorties, and uh, Steel Path Circuit, th this is going to be a lot less useful if you don't have a booster for mod booster, which is not purchasable in-game. All right, let's get right into it about strategy guides. So as far as the strategy for this, the way that Cascade works... We are going to be capturing these Exalizers. We will be breaking the Exalizer open with uh, Void Dash, Operator Amp Damage, and also Operator Amp abil Abilities. Well, not Operator Amp Abilities, but like Contamination Wave from Mana Rai, for example, can break these Void Tears. Once all Void Tears are broken on a uh, Exalizer, it will, the, the Thrax that was inside the Exalizer will, will break out, and that is when you can kill them, or if you are weak and cannot destroy them for some reason, you can avoid the Thrax. The only thing that really matters is making the threat, making sure the Exalizer is not red. The red Exalizer makes the bar go up, and we don't want that to go up because it goes all the way up. We have to leave the mission. Now, thankfully, if the bar goes all the way up, you don't lose all your loot from the mission. You just have to go to the elevator and leave. Uh, and get ready to die a lot in the elevator as Revenant because once, the, Exal once the, the meter goes all the way to the right and gets fully filled to red, you will drain health per second even on the elevator uh, with Mesmer. Well, I guess Mesmer can get turned off the elevator. So let's start going over some gear and strategies. Uh, for what to do here. So now that you know what to do, you know, purge the Exalizers, how are we going to organize this? How are we going to kill level 10,000s extremely efficiently? The One of the keys is to have a full squad and to organize your squad to an extent. So I would recommend, and you're seeing it on the, on the screen right now, I'd recommend having two players in your team as a de designated defenders and two players in your team as a, as a designated attackers. What will each of these roles do? Well, the attackers will be pushing into the next room there are so the way that Void Cascade works, you have three rooms will be your your basically your tile layout. You have the spawn room like the one we're in right now, and it will be random which one it is. There will be a second room and there will be a third room. Once you go through all the and once you fill exalizers in those rooms, there will be either three, four, or five exalizers in those rooms. Most of them have three or four. Uh, once you fully fill those rooms up, it will go from the third room back to the first room. A new exalizer will spawn in the first room. That's why the attack team is very crucial here. They will pre-camp the first room so you don't have a red Exalizer when you're three rooms away and no one is near the Exalizer. So attack team, basically they will be the ones prioritizing the new red Exalizers and they will have two defenders 
that will be watching the white exolizers to make sure they don't get captured by Thrax. Because Thrax love to spawn on top of this thing and try to capture it when you're not looking. And trust me, it will happen. They will spawn Thrax directly on top of the exolizer, which is why you really need a defense team. So... Uh, defender frames can be really whatever. Octavia is quite good for defender. Uh, Revenant's quite good for attack because he doesn't have to really care about anything. Octavia can be good for attack too. But yeah, um, so basically crucial to have two defenders and two attackers, guys. You def decide you want to uh, you know lead up the roles. But yeah, I'd recommend having some extremely powerful frames too. You're gonna either want invincibility like Revenant's Mesmer skin or invisibility like uh, Metronome from Octavia. Going invis, enemies can't see you. If you are able to survive and kill you will be rewarded with a bunch of loot, hopefully. So let's start going over what gear you should be using for this mission, and also we'll be doing some adv more advanced tips here in a little bit. So as far as the operator stuff, uh, I do, I'd like to let you know that I would highly recommend running Matterai here. Some people love to adamantly say, you don't need Matterai for level 10,000 Void Cascade. Well, if you don't have Matterai in my squad, you're definitely going to be getting judged. So please make sure you bring Matterai in my squads at least. Uh, because I want you to be killing Thrax as fast as possible. So, we're on Matterai Focus Tree. Now, as far as what we're using here, the biggest abilities that we're using on Matterai Focus Tree are Contamination Wave and sometimes Void Strike. Contamination Wave is hilariously, like, kind of more important here than Void Strike. So, what Contamination Wave does, you throw out, like, a wave of Void Energy stuff, and it will uh, drench the enemy in Void Contamination, making them take more damage from Operator Amp Damage for 20 seconds. This can also break those Void Tears. So you can use this as like a ranged attack. You can use it on the Thrax Ghost to make them get one shot, you know, multi-million damage to the amp. Very, very good, and you should go, be going for this if you want to farm Void Cascade. Uh, and yes, you can get hundreds of Arcanes in like a couple hours here. Void Strike is also good here, but it's not used as much. Drain your entire energy bar for big damage. Now, as far as Unairu, I have done level 10,000 with Unairu. Uh, it does have an amp buff called Unairu Wisp, but the main reason you would go Unairu is if you don't want to armor ship other sources. Because Caustic Strike, the ability, second ability of Unairu, can remove enemy armor entirely. Um, that's something you might want to go for. But also, with the stuff, the stuff we're showing in the video today, you don't need Unairu. Just go Matarai. But I just want to show this in case someone did want to try something else. And of course, you can go Vazarin and all that. But if you are going Vazarin or some not DPS-focused tree, you want to be jamming as much damage as possible. Like Magus Melt, Eternal Eradicate, Eternal Onslaught every time, Okay. Now, as far as the amp, we showed the focus, we have the amp arcanes. Now, Magus Cloud might look surprising to you. On Void Sling, plus 300% Void Sling radius for 6 seconds. Who even uses that? Well, you can use this in this mission, because, like I said, those Void Tears can be broken by Operator Amp Void Sling. This makes your, your Void Sling a gigantic radius. I can quickly show you in the sim. It's actually kind of hard to show in the sim. This will make your, amp, your, uh, your Void Dash radius extremely large. And it will let you, you know, cover a massive area, which will make it so all, almost all Void Tears get broken at once. Uh, is it necessary or meta? Maybe meta, yeah. Necessary, definitely not. Um, you can choose other amp or, or other Operator Arcanes in that slot. I'd recommend maybe Magus Lockdown, Magus... Sa some people like Emergent Savior. I don't like that, but some people do. Uh, but yeah, Magus Cloud is just a convenience thing, personal player preference if you want to be hitting more Void Tears at a time. Magus Melt is great for more amp damage. Also very good for Void Angels. You do end up fighting the Void Angel. The Eternal Onslaught on Energy Depleted increased crit chance by a lot for 8 seconds. This will be great with Void Strike. Um, you can also put some other ones there at the end if you don't drain all your energy. And this, this one's more important. Eternal Eradicate on Operator Ability increased amp damage. That's pretty good. And then for our, our amp, we have the 147 amp with Replock Prism, Pod Scaffold, and Certus Brace. This will be the maximum crit and the Replock Prism. Uh, Prism is the hardest hitting per shot. The Pod Scaffold is like a Glaive Launcher that can kill multiple uh, level 10,000 Thrax at the same time. Also very good for getting yourself a res if you ever go down in mission. Some other amps you could try. You could definitely try the 177, which a lot of people have from Eidolon fights before. You can do the 777, which a lot of people have from before uh, for Eidolon fights as well. So it really is up to you. Um, but I would recommend having the 1 Prism and the 7 uh, Brace. That's basically the maximum crit and the highest hitting uh, shot. Some people like the 5 uh, Prism instead, which is a burst fire rifle. I haven't really used it enough to really say one way or the other. I like it more, but I've used this one a lot, and I love this amp for these missions. So, let's, now that we've gone over the amp and the focus, let's start talking about frame builds. You know, I said invincibility and invisibility. Well, there's some characters that are, you know, so good that we kind of make them. We, we, we want to use them here anyway, so we're going to make them invincible through new builds. And let's start off with Zaku. And the Invincible, or not Invincible Zaku, it's just, it's a terrified Zaku build, updated for 2024. We have new shield getting changes and all that. And yeah, this Zaku build can fully shield tank. 
uh, with just casting Zata's Whisper over and over again. So just going to hurry up and jump in here to show you how this works. So look at our shield at the top right. It says 66 shields. As long as we keep recasting our ability, we will not die. As long as we don't run out of energy, that is. So if, if your build can do this, your build will be in the right kind of situation for Void Cascade. Now I have Rolling Guarding around that Slash proc. And of course, we could just kill these guys, but I actually have a video to make here, so let's go ahead and despawn them. So if you can face tank that, you are in the right situation. And now let's go ahead and show what the Zaku build is. Uh, and of course, you can kill them too. I'll show some Zaku footage here uh, for level 10,000s. But yes, the idea of this Zaku build is to be using the Terrify ability of uh, Necros from Helminth. And we're using Grasp of Loke, the Void Guns, to kill level 10,000 enemies. We can also use Zata's Whisper for either shield gating, because it gives us shields for brief respite, or to buff weapons like the Fellarks or the Boar and Karnon for big damage. We can kill stuff with either weapons or gun, uh, our abilities at that level. The problem is these Void Guns, the Grasp of Loke, they like to just not shoot enemies sometimes at this. So, but yeah, with this, with this exact shard setup and multi augmented, you will be fully armor stripping with. Uh, with this amount of power strength. Now, if you do have, if you do want to put Tau shards on here, I decided to not put Tau shards on here because I want it to be more accessible. Uh, you could, can actually take off. I think you can take off one of these shards uh, because it will be a Tau instead. Will, you'll have enough power strength. But yeah, for the rest of the stuff, we have two power strength shards, two casting speed shards, and one purple equilibrium shard. Reminder: these are now fixed, and you no longer need to have synth fiber equipped in your companion anymore. It was like that at launch, though. As far as the Zaku build, this is going to be a shield getting level ten thousand Zaku terrify build. Uh, and yes, I do have Energize on here because we are not running Nourish on Zaku. It's one of the only frames today we're not running Nourish on. Uh, and yes, this is extremely tuned. Now, I want to let you know that if you're looking at this right now and you're like, you're one of those guys who just clicks to the builds, you're gonna be, you're not going to be surviving the way I just did. You know why that is? Because we have all these mods right here, but we also need to take a little, little bit step further. On our pistol, we have the Augur Pact mod and the Augur Seeker mods. These give us more shields when we cast our abilities on our frame, depending on how much energy we ca our cost, or how much, how much the ability costs. So with all these mods stacked together, we can perma shield gate with just Zaku's one, which I wanted to do on this build, because that's an ability you can constantly recast. Uh, and it's also got a pretty ca uh, quick casting time. So as far as you know, what is being modded for here, I'm not going to dwell on the build for too long. Uh, you get full shields by ca using abilities with brief respite and auger mods. If you if you need to like get a brief moment of, of invincibility, use rolling guard to get all status procs off of you. Uh, catalyzing shields reduces our shields. So we can get to that maximum shield gate from one ability cast. I've tried I've tried it before without catalyzing shields. Our shield gate is still one point. Our shield gate is worse with uh, without catalyzing shields. Than compared to with Catalyzing Shield, because Zaku has such low shield. So, I recommend going Catalyzing on Zaku for sure, especially on this build. Uh, the rest of the stuff is just going to be getting enough strength, getting enough range. You want lots of range on Zaku, because the amount of range you have uh, shows how many Void Guns you get as well. So, if you don't have everything on here, that's okay. You can, you know, make a little bit of changes here and there. I guess you don't technically need Prime Shift Foot if you don't have it. But yes, you do need Molt Augmented and all this Power Strength on the exact number to get this build working properly. Arcan Energize is on here for picking up orbs. We got Equilibrium, so it's, we'll make sure our energy economy is good. If you don't have any energy on Zaku, you're basically dead. All right, as far as the, as far as the Fell Arcs, we get a Viral Electric Fell Arcs. Uh, now, of course, you use Terrify from, from the Helmet ability. It will remove enemy armor. It does work on Thrax armor, too. So this could take care of a Thrax after you use Terrify on them, if you want to do this. Your Void Guns maybe aren't working. Now, as far as the Riven, it is a Viral minus Crit Riven. I'd recommend getting a minus Crit Riven on this thing because it can make it get the access to the big multiplier more often. If you don't have a... Riven for it, that's too bad. Uh, try to get on Viral somehow, if you can do that. I have Viral Electric. Um, like maybe just go with a Cold Mod here, a Toxin Mod here, and then move the Electric Mod like down there. That should work. But yeah, as far as the build, it works quite well at level 10,000s. Uh, if you're using Vigorous Swap and things like that, it's one shell to kill them. We got the Compressa here. Now, the reason, reason the Compressa is so good, I've actually got it on two different frames. For this one, it's because the double auger mods is nice. But also, the amount of multi-shot the Compressa has can get you lots of corrosive procs. So the new green corrosive shards, this will let you get 14 corrosive procs really quickly. That's what the other build, the Synth CO build, is for. This is for silence frames like uh, Octavia and Ivara. But yeah, for the, the Zaku build, we just got some auger mods in here for more shield gate. And we just want to get some viral and some uh, other procs on them. Mostly just viral. We got corrosive on here, too, for frames that have green shards. Cascadia Empowered is not important. I was just messing with it. You can do whatever you want on here. Uh, as long as it's not going to be something that causes cold procs. I wouldn't really recommend Secondary Encumber for this because the, the speed at which the ghost turns into, uh, the, the frax turns into a ghost is affected by slows and cold procs. So just be aware of that. It's not the end of the world if you can slow on the frax, but your teammates might be like, what happened there? Uh, so yes, go with, with anything you want there. Like uh, Encumber, 
Voltage, Outburst, Merciless. Let's go Merciless for right now. So, and as far as the melee, this will be the same melee for every character, guys. It's not a, this is not a melee video. The Prados with Drifting Grace for increased sprint speed and slide. And also the Parkour Velocity increase from Evolved Ascension makes it. So you can go from Exalizer to Exalizer very fast. The build is really not even used. Like I don't, it's it's a cr uh, corrosive heavy attack build. I don't use this very often. You can put on the new corrosive arcane melee exposure to get even more corrosive. Uh, but I would not recommend this. And if you don't have the ribbon, just put on glider might in that slot, and it will probably be very similar. All right, that's enough of that. Let's move on to the. Uh, and also, do not run Zenerek on Zaku. Run uh, run Mara on Zaku. I was doing Zaku in a Netra cell, so sorry about that. Uh, as far as the companion Panzer Volpophila, very good. It's still good even with uh, the changes to it, so put Tenacious Bond on there. So yeah, uh, if you want to do Equilibrium, you got uh, Synth Mods on here. If you want to do Non-Equilibrium, something more like this might be better. But that's enough talking about Zaku. Let's move on to the next frame. I'm going to be showing you Zombie Octavia now. Okay, Zaku, it's, just, it's basically just an updated Zaku build. Okay, it's, there's nothing too phenomenal about it. It's just Terrify Zaku. Uh, Terrify works on Thrax. Terrify does not work on Acolytes. Just be aware of that if you're playing Zaku with this build. All right, moving on to Octavia. This build I put lots of work into, and I'm quite happy with how it turned out in the end because it is truly a zombie. You are a zombie DJ, and you don't need to really pay attention. So I'll be showing you exactly. So if you watch my previous Revenant videos on Zombie Revenant, basically the zombie virus has spread to Octavia. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and show what, this, what works here. So in the footage, you're seeing some of it. But yes, the mallet of Octavia annihilates Overguard. If you are annoyed about Overguard, bring an Octavia, throw on a mallet, throw on a, an amp, and you're good to go. All Overguard basically gone. Now, it's not as good against actual enemy armor after the Overguard's gone. But yeah, if you want to break the Overguard in the first place to do whatever to them, Octavia is great for that. So let's go ahead and show what we have. So I'm using the Burst in Prime with Octavia. It is the full zombie Octavia. We've got three Power Strength Shards. Actually, we've got, I take it back, we got two Power Strike Shards and one Duration Shard for Crimson. And we got two green Corosa Stack Max um, Archon Shards for Emerald. These are the new shards. If you don't have these, you get to beat the Whispers in the Wall quest and get to rank three with the new Syndicate. Now, but we are going zombie here. So what that means is we're going to be uh, using green shards and Energy Nexus with Nourish to get infinite energy. Uh, now, most people, or most frames can run this, but Octavia is pretty funny in the way that her passive actually gives her more energy when she casts an ability. So we get one energy per second for 30 seconds. That will stack with Energy Nexus. That's four energy per second before Nourish's Multiplier. So multiply that all by like, you know, five or whatever. We have a constant flow of energy and we cannot, we, we basically cannot die unless we get like caught in the crossfires because we can just keep going in Viz permanently. But as far as the build, here's what we got. Uh, now, Octavia is one of those frames that wants lots of ability stats. But thankfully, because we're a zombie, we don't have to care about efficiency. So uh, let's just go ahead and show how this works in, in uh, the sim real quick. So max, uh, nearly maximum range, no overextended because we want to keep our high power strength. Uh, our mallet can cover a 17.5 radius and it is doubled by the amp. Did you know that amp says it doubles the damage of mallet, but it actually doesn't? It just gives you more range? Well, it does. And also, when we're fully stacked up, our amp gives us 700% damage buff for our burst and prime, which is very nice. Um, metronome gives us multi-shot and a speed buff. It also makes us invisible. And Nourish is just what we're using to keep all this stuff together. Uh, Multi-augmented and multi-efficiency giving us power strength and duration. Let's just go ahead and show how this works. Now, another thing to keep in mind, if you're playing an invisibility character like Ivara or um, Octavia, make sure you have this mod or a mod like this on your weapon. It reduces the chance enemy will hear your gunfire entirely. So they will not hear your guns being fired off in the background. That's important. Also, I learned this the other day, this mod, Galvanized Aptitude, is terrible on the Burst and Incarnate. Do not use it. It scales really, really badly for some reason. So go go Hammer Shot, go Serration. Just don't go with this, basically. And let's, let's see what we have here. So for Octavia, it's going to be a lot of going in Viz and lots of button presses. So we push the third ability and we teabag. So see these circles when they go in the middle? That's when you teabag. And if you teabag properly, you can go in Viz. Additionally, we can jump and we can build a meter. See right there, 18%. Once that meter is filled all the way, we get increased movement speed as long as we jump to the beat. So 36, 54, 72, 90. Now we have a movement speed buff that will work for your teammates as well. So going into this giant group of fracks like earlier, look at my energy bar going up and down, up and down. Energy completely gone. And look look at that, it's already, it's already a third of the way back. So mid-mission, this is what you can do. And yes, this is just Octavia hanging out. They, they have no idea where I am. And with our good amp, we can take care of all these thracks. So yes, the amp is quite good. I wasn't exaggerating. And Octavia is quite good too. So yes, completely mindless zombie. Um, 
As far as, you know, the weapons and all that, when they get to level 10,000, you do kind of want to have a weapon to kill their Overguard. So we got the Burst and Incarnon with uh, Forceful Finality, Kinetic Battle, and Absolute Valor, giving increased crit chance. Our build is Corrosive, because if you're a zombie, you need to have a Corrosive build. So the reason we have a Corrosive build here is because the Corrosive will stack up really quickly from uh, the status chance we have on here, which is like 90% status chance, and we will get Viral procs after that, which will mean the enemy has no armor, and they're fully Viral debuff, and they're taking Heat procs. So it will just melt them instantly at level 10,000. So very nice there. Uh, if you don't have a Riven, I recommend getting one, but if you... If you still want to run a riff, uh, you still just don't want to riff, put on vigilante armaments in that slot. It's a lot worse, but it's it, it's kind of close, I guess. You got half the multi shot of my ribbon, but yeah, the burst incarnate is definitely ribbon worthy. As far as the rest of the stuff, I didn't really use anything particular here. I just used the burst. Now I did have the grimoire equipped at a point. This is not a grimoire video, but for a grimoire build, uh, this was quite nice on Octavia. Uh, you know, silencer obviously, but a bunch of extra duration. You know, you can put strength on there, whatever. You don't need the energy regen from whatever that uh, Zata one is. So that's going to be great. Now, as far as the other stuff, uh, yeah, you don't really need, there's not much to, to really know about Octavia. Just throw on the mallet, throw on the amp, and go in Viz. You're good. Uh, so as far as a couple other characters, I did have a list of stuff I wanted to show you guys. I think there's one more frame I wanted to show you. So we got Octavia, Revenant, and Zata. Okay, so Revenant, I showed the Compressa, Burston. I didn't show the Tox or the Felarch. So... Um, I actually, I'm, I think that I'm not going to show the Revenant build right now. If you want to check out my Revenant build, go to the Zombie Revenant Guide. Um, I'm actually going to show you guys which rooms are the best for Void Cascade and give you a bunch of tips and tricks, okay? Um, actually, no, we can, we can flash the Revenant's Revenant build real quick. It won't take too long. So, for uh, Zombie Revenant, just really quickly, there is a full guide. There will probably be a full guide on Zombie Octavia at some point, too. But just, it's a quick, you know, overview video today. Uh, we got our green shards as uh, as... The other characters do. We have a bunch of parkour velocity. We have energy nexus, the mainstay of this build. And yeah, we're DPSing with the dual tox assist. The dual tox assist is a very similar build to the burst and Incarnon. We got uh, corrosive. And we, on, on Revenant, you definitely don't need a silencer. But on uh, Octavia, you probably would. So that's the build right there. If you don't have a Riven with punch through, put the punch through mod on there. If you want single target damage, just put a different mod there that's not punch through. Because punch through makes a multi target. All right, so let's start going in and checking out what rooms would be the best for this. Because like I said earlier, um, you know, you get, there's rooms that can have three, four, or five exilizers. And as far as the fastest way to do this, you want to have rooms with the most exilizers possible. And there's actually only one room that has five exilizers. I'm going to show you that one to you right now. Now, I wouldn't say go and fish for a good tile on this, but if you're trying to do like a multiple hour run, like, you know, sometimes we do like three, five hour runs on this thing, you might want to maybe consider getting a good room that has like four or five exilizers. For example, the one you're seeing on the screen right now, that's a four exilizer room. Not too bad. You know, four, every four exilizers is a rotational reward as well. So if you're worried about rotational rewards, that can be something you can keep in mind. So here we are in my ship and we got Captura. So I'm going to show you all the Zeramon uh, Captura scenes right now as far as, um, you know, which ones are good. So let's just go over every single one right now. I'm going to tell you which rooms are good, which ones are bad. So the Zeramon Serenity Levels scene. This one has, I believe, uh, I believe four exilizers in this room, so that's considered a good room. Zeramon Schoolyard scene, also a four exilizer room, pretty good. Zeramon Reliquary scene does not appear in this mission. Zeramon Lunaro Court scene is a three exilizer room. I would view that one as not very good. Zeramon Hall of Legends scene is also a three exilizer and just has an annoying staircase in the middle, very bad. Um, there is a one room that here is really bad. The Zeraman Arga Arga Zone scene is the worst kept is the worst uh, exilizer room in the entire entire tile set. I'd say. You know why that is? Because an exilizer can spawn right here, right where I'm shooting. An exilizer spawns right there. It will ragdoll you off this bridge into the floor. And not to mention, it's also a three exilizer room too. So if you see this room, that means that you didn't get super lucky on your run. But I mean, it's not really worth resetting for. Um, this is one of the rooms that is more annoying. Let's show the room that you should definitely be looking for if you are trying to hunt for a good tile on this. And that's going to be the, um, I believe it's the Zeramon Cargo Bay. So the, the one that has five exilizers. So this is another, this is a three exilizer room right here. Um, Roost, I think, is four. And Zeramon Brig is three. This one is three as well. So the one that you actually want to go for and try to find is the Zeramon Docking Bay scene. This is a five exilizer room. So if you have a five exilizer room, you'll be getting through these rotations quite quickly. So yeah, it can spawn over there, 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 and there. It has so many exilizers, I can't even shoot them all without my Aventus running out of 
uh, magazine. So yeah, this is the best room for a Voidcast game, um, just because of all the exilizers. But uh, yeah, that's going to be mostly it for you uh, for, the, for the guide today, guys. As far as the, you know, some tips and tricks and all that, uh, I do have a couple things I do want to tell you here at the end. So as far as, you know, the frames to bring, I would not recommend bringing four revenants to the squad. Why is that? Because that's just boring, okay? At least having one frame that is not revenant would be the, uh, an ideal situation if you ask me. And as far as the, you know, the hierarchy of how good and easy these frames are to play, Revenant definitely is the easiest to play. He's also probably the less, least amount of button presses. Um, but Octavia can be quite good, too. Um, the reason that Octavia is not as good, uh, I wouldn't call Octavia as good as Revenant, is because for Octavia, yeah, you can actually technically get shot. If, if, if there's a Revenant sitting next to you, the Revenant might get shot, and you're next to them, and they get, you get caught in the crossfire. So with Revenant, it's just like, all right, enemies don't matter. The enemy level doesn't matter. Just bring good weapons and, you know, nourish, nuke everything down. Uh, but beyond that, yeah, get, just go get tons of Arcanes, you know. Um, stay in here. So you, here's some, some stuff as well. And 107 Exilizers, the enemies are level 10,000. Additionally, I would not really recommend doing this if you don't have a mod booster or if somebody in your squad has a mod booster. Like I said, I have a mod booster all the time. So if you want to come stop by stream, and if I'm looking for people for this mission, of course, you can hop in potentially if you have the gear. Um, but yeah, this is just stuff to work towards, guys. Um, you don't have... And it's not like, oh, you only showed Revenant, Octavia, and Zaku. Those are the only characters to play? No, definitely not. You can play a ton of stuff. You can play you, know, you can play Sevagoth. You can play Ash. You can play Saren. You can play Protea. The list goes on. Just please don't bring a Calervo or a Anaros. Why is that? Because at high enough levels, like the levels you're seeing on screen, Anaros and Calervo die in basically one hit. Now, Calervo technically dies in two hits. Uh, but yeah, if you don't get your Overguard back as Calervo, you're going to be pretty much an Anaros running around. So... Frames that have invincibility or invisibility, like we said earlier, are the frames to go for. And that's basically going to be it for the video, guys. Um, if there's any other specific things you'd like to see, let me know. Maybe I can make a video for that in the future. But yeah, that's going to be your Void Cascade Guide. Um, lots and lots of arcanes. Lots and lots of high-level enemies. Oh, also, one more thing as well. Before, If you do get to level 10,000, make sure you bring out the Samaras Scanner. Why is that? At level 10,000, Cephalon Samaras uh, scanning these enemies gives you 6,000 rep per. So you'll get maxed out Samaras rep in like five scans. And also, it seems like Octavius 3, the, the uh, metronome, can give multi-shot to the scanner, giving you double scans, too. But don't quote me on that. It just seemed like it was working. So I'll see you guys in the next video. I appreciate all the support. And yeah, uh, you know, lots and lots of loot. Uh, this is, these are, like, I basically probably made about, in a three-hour mission, they probably made about like 500 or 600 plat from this, just from arcane sets alone. So not too bad. I'd recommend going for it. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take it easy. Bye.